One time an ex-boyfriend of mine told me that I always smell like fried onions and potatoes and I was just like, cool, you gotta get with the program. That's the way it's gonna be. My name's Emily. You might recognize me from my very carb-heavy Instagram account, Food Lover's Diary. Today we're making my babushka's potato vareniki. Potato vareniki are a Ukrainian dumpling and hers are filled with mashed potatoes and caramelized onions and they are my favorite. I used to beg her to make them when I was a little kid and I cannot wait to share them with you guys. So first things first, we are gonna work on the potato filling. These are just plain old russet potatoes. The main thing with Russian culture and immigrant culture is you kinda use what you've got. So I'm using russet, but I think you can use whatever potato you have on hand. Mashed potatoes are, are the world's greatest food, only amplified when you wrap them in dough. So we're just gonna cube them up and boil them. First of all, I grew up in a very potato positive household. We had potatoes for every meal, fried, mashed, whatever. I continue the potato love in my adult life. I'm just gonna cube them up about one inch, you know, and we're gonna get them boiling in a pot of salted water. First step of adding flavor to the dish. I'm gonna go ahead and plop the potatoes in. Let's make some fried onions. If I could characterize my childhood in two ingredients, it would be potatoes and onions, so this is just kind of perfect. And we're using onions two ways in this recipe. We're gonna use some fried diced onions in the filling, and we're gonna make a buttery, smoky paprika caramelized onion topping. That was a lot of adjectives, but I just needed to fit them all in there. My grandma, aka babushka, babushka is the Russian word for grandma, she was never very specific, and I think it's interesting in my adult cooking life, I try to work really hard on having excellent technique, but when I, my grandma would chop onions, it would just be like, there was big ones, there's small ones, it never really mattered to her, and I feel like we could all use a little bit more of those lighthearted cooking vibes. I don't like it when it gets too serious. Russian food and Russian cooking was really how I connected with the culture. Um, you know, my parents had only been in the country just for like, for like four years before me and my twin sister were born, and we became really Americanized really quickly. So spending time with my grandparents who never spoke English until their dying day and cooking with my mom and learning about Russian culture through food, Russian Jewish culture, really was my favorite way of connecting with and understanding where I came from. And I feel like a lot of first generation kids would say the same thing, you know? It's really a special thing. All right, we got our diced onions. We're gonna get them going in some butter. All right, we're gonna keep the onions on a pretty low heat. While the onions are frying up, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our dough. This dough is one of the best parts of the recipe and I'm gonna explain why. The dough I'm making today is a kefir dough. We're gonna start with measuring out two cups of flour. Gonna make a little nest in the middle here for all our wet ingredients. We're gonna throw a pinch of salt in here too. So yeah, wet ingredients are the kefir, one egg and two tablespoons of butter all melted down. We're gonna need about a quarter cup of this kefir. We're gonna mix those two together. And lastly, one egg. All right, it's all going in. Just gonna use the fork method to whisk the wet ingredients and slowly as you whisk, the dry ingredients, AKA the flour, will kind of incorporate into the liquid center until you're left with a dough, a shaggy dough as they say that we can kind of just knead on the counter. I'm gonna add a little bit more kefir. If I'm finding this to be too dry, I can always add a little bit more liquid. I can add more kefir, I can add more water. And if it's too wet, you can always add a little bit more flour. I have so many memories of my grandma going so hard. She would be like kneading the dough and I'd just be like, you're, this is a little scary, she was old. She was like, very strong though. <laughs> so the dough is forming. I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more liquid because I want it to be soft. With a variniki dough, it's not the same as pasta dough. You're not trying to strike that perfect, like firm dough. A little bit softer, a little bit more malleable is actually preferred. It's easier to work with. We're just gonna need for like five or so minutes. Great. So I wrapped the dough up in plastic. We're gonna let it rest for really however long it takes to get everything ready to make the variniki, probably about half an hour. All right, we have our potatoes done and we're gonna mash them babushka style with a fork. All right, perfect. That looks pretty good to me. And so now all we gotta do is add in our fried onions, season it, and we have our variniki filling. The diced onions are all set. I'm gonna pop them into our bowl with mashed potatoes. And the good news is these are already really buttery and that does a lot for flavoring the filling off the bat. It makes it more rich. We're just gonna season up with a little bit of salt and pepper. And we just mix it all up. 
And uh, that was it. It's really easy. Vreniki filling, babaluelos, the best kind. We're gonna start getting my favorite topping ready. It is a buttery, smoky paprika, caramelized onion topping. Lots of words, all good things. What we're gonna do for the onion topping is differently from the diced onions, we're just gonna slice the onion in rounds and we're gonna cook it in butter and then you just add paprika to it. It's the most simple thing ever and it's so crazy delicious. As far as the types of onions to use, again, it really doesn't matter. I think we used a lot of yellow onions growing up. There's a Spanish onion here and a sweet onion in here. We're gonna pop these into a skillet with loads of butter. I'm actually gonna put a lid on these onions because I want them to like almost steam. I think our dough has rested long enough, so we are going to roll dough, make my babushka proud. We're gonna use her rolling pin, and it is gonna be great. Let's do it. We're gonna cut the dough in half. So this isn't a perfect dough. It kind of can turn out however which way. It's much less finicky than pasta dough. I'm gonna maybe flour the surface a little bit. Flour the rolling pan up and we're gonna go for it. This is the best arm workout you could possibly have. Woo! Right, sometimes I kind of try to stretch it by hand a little bit to make my life easier. Oh, I love the smell of raw dough, so good. We're gonna get some really big pushes in here. So this is probably good enough as far as our purposes. Uh, it's thin enough, like you can see my hand through it, like the shadow, ah! but it doesn't have to be super, super thin. Very important part of the process is going through all your mugs and figuring out which one is your, your Varenik size. It's a personal, a personal thing. I've decided that this is the ideal circumference for me. Let's say it's about two and a half, three inches across. So let's make some Vareniki. We're gonna cut out a circle of dough. I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of potato filling in. So we're gonna line the edge with some water and we're just gonna pinch it shut into a half moon. It is quite literally the easiest thing ever. That's it, you could stop there. I like to get a little fancy and I do a little finger imprint just so they look cute. And there you go. All right, repeat. <laughs> so as you can see, every part is kind of a labor of love. There's definitely ways of making it easier on yourself, but this is just the way I grew up doing it. And I feel like doing it in a way that is kind of a labor of love really reminds me of my grandma. And so I like doing it this way, but you could absolutely use a pasta machine. You can use cookie cutters. You don't have to like go hard with twisting a mug. So I'm going to get some water boiling, salt it like you would for pasta. We have our vareniki and they're gonna take a little bath and then just make sure to give them a nice stir. The vareniki are gonna cook for about five, six minutes. You want them to float and then give them a second, especially if the dough's on the thicker side, you want the dough to cook all the way through. This is a situation where we do not want an al dente varenique. All right, just popping them in with the butter so they don't stick to each other. Coat them, toss them. Oh yeah. Okay, perfect. Just stir up our onions. And we're gonna go in with some smoked paprika. Smoked. Extremely important. Do you smell that? Oh my God. Smoked paprika is so underrated. All right, we're just gonna plate up a couple. They are giant, as you can see, as God intended. This is kind of a small plate, but I'm into it. A little bit of our paprika onions. We're gonna get a dollop of sour cream on the side and the Russian lifeblood, dill. Can't live without it. All right. That was an aggressive amount of dill, I'll admit. I, I don't think there's such, such thing as too much, but that, that might've been too much. All right, but here you have it. Undisputably the best part of the entire cooking process. It is time to taste. Time to fashion a perfect bite. Get a little onion on there, a little bit of sour cream. Every time I eat them, I feel like excited all over again. There is just something about the combination of the sweet, smoky onions with the tangy sour cream and the super luscious and delicious vareniki that just, it gets me excited every single time. It is so delicious. To try my Babushka Lola's vareniki for yourself, click the link down below. And if you're as big of a dumpling fiend as I am, you can head to emilyfedner.com slash books for two digital cookbooks, one dedicated to dumplings and one dedicated to pasta. We love carbs over here.
Fun fact, my dad, being the Russian man that he is, growing up at every meal, my dad would eat an onion like an apple. It would be in his left hand, fork in the right, and between bites of whatever we're eating, he would bite an onion. I definitely got the vodka part of being Russian down, but like eating onions raw, not so much, not yet.